Hi, my name is Marco Bohansen. I'm a physician and I have a PhD in necrotizing soft tissue infections. On the daily basis, I'm the medical director and co-founder of a medtech company called Saninoch, where we are fighting infections in hospitals. Uh, so let's start talking a little bit more about your session, I guess. Uh, can you tell us, summarize in a few words on the topic of your session and how did it go? Yeah. So the topic of the session was necrotizing soft tissue infections, also called flesh-eating bacteria or necrotizing fasciitis. And my um, presentation focused on how, um, both in terms of the general disease, how common is it, how do you diagnose it, how do you classify it. I also presented two patient cases where it kind of illustrated how important communication it is in order to prevent diagnostic errors. Then uh, my session was followed by two other presentations, one by Professor Klaus Moser, who told us how important a uh, timely antibiotic is and that you need to remember to reach high uh, doses of antibiotics in patients with necrotizing soft tissue infections. And then finally, uh, Chief Physician Ole Hyllegård told us about the benefits of hyperbaric oxygen treatment in these patients. And in general, uh, the, the necrotizing soft tissue infections, how common are they? Luckily, they are not that common. Um, in Denmark, we have seen an increase over the years from around 100 to now 140, 150 cases a year. So it's still a low number, but the percentage increase is really high. Can it be um, a, the cause of like mortality as well, right? Or if it's very, very serious, if you don't catch it early or... It is a, it, it's a serious disease. Um, we know that time from diagnosis to treatment, which is uh, operation and surgery, is uh, crucial for survival. Mm -hmm. So survival rates... Um, are between 20 to 30 percent, uh, depending on where you look uh, in terms of survival, whether it's 30 days or 90 days. Mm -hmm. um, it's a serious disease, you need to react quickly, and you need um, aggressive surgery, intensive care unit uh, treatment, and antibiotics as well. Mm -hmm. So I guess the kind of the normal uh, cause of treatment, let's say, let's say you catch it early, What's the first thing you do? Is it antibiotic treatment and surgery? You start up antibiotics immediately. Then you book an OR to go to surgery very quickly. And these two factors are crucial. Um, but the most uh, difficult thing is actually making the diagnosis mm -hmm. because it is difficult. Sometimes the symptoms are very vague. It looks like a normal infection. The Really, the only distinct distinction is that the pain is so high so you would think okay I, I kind of hurt myself but the pain I've never experienced such a high pain before uh, it doesn't feel right so that's the only sort of indication you get of necrotizing fasciitis mm -hmm. and as we said it's an infection can it be caused by different types of bacteria it can be we have seen in the data that up to 50 different types of bacteria can cause necrotizing soft tissue infections. Um, in 50% of the cases, uh, it is caused by a break on the skin, mm -hmm. um, either by trauma or surgery. So in 20% of the cases, people have undergone surgery or other procedures in hospitals where they got infected. And um, that's, where, that's what I think is really interesting because it also shows us a potential to improve and prevent these infections in the first place. Mm -hmm. And that is also what I'm working with in Saninoch. Yeah. And just a general question. Um, have you seen any kind of resistant cases with the treatment, like resistant bacteria to the treatment? Yeah, we do. We have seen um, some types of multi-resistant bacteria um, in the cases. We haven't looked into whether there is an increased mortality. Mm -hmm. I would expect that, but um, 
but yeah, we definitely have seen some cases. Yeah, and as we mentioned before, you are, you are uh, the co-founding director of uh, your own company, right? Yeah. Can you talk us a little bit about you know what you do there? As yes, well? of course. So in Seninoch, it is a company who develops um, uh, sensors for healthcare, hospitals, nursing homes, rehabilitation centers. So these sensors measure uh, behavior, hygiene behavior, and we use the data to create algorithms that both um, improve hygiene behavior, so we prevent infections, and also we are looking into how we can predict infections where they are occurring in hospitals, high-risk areas, where you most likely get infected. Mm -hmm. And is this like a Danish company? Are you actually operating in multiple countries? It is a Danish uh, company. It was uh, started in Denmark by uh, the three co-founders. I'm one of them. But right now we have gone international. So we we have um, we are co-working or col collaborating with the biggest hygiene company in the world, Ecolab. And now we are in in different European countries such as UK, uh, Germany, France. Romania, Poland, mm -hmm. um, the Netherlands. Yeah. So uh, it's quite exciting times and it's more important than ever to fight these infections. We need to prevent them from occurring so we can also fight the increase in antimicrobial resistance. Yeah. And like as a response to like a coronavirus as well, did you see like a, I guess like an increase in this and in, in the use of these sensors, right? And the prediction. Yeah, I think now people have really um, understood how important infection prevention is, infection prevention and control. Um, before that, hospital managers, CEOs, they didn't prioritize hand, uh, hand hygiene and hygiene and infection prevention. It wasn't sexy, it wasn't something they could see on their budgets, um, mm -hmm. But now they start to, to prioritize it. Everybody understands how important infection prevention is. Yeah, and I guess in the hospitals, this is like the most important, because I remember when you have like a patient with AMR infection, and then you need to find the source. I guess, I guess this kind of sensors and prediction can exactly. also help in, you know, deal with these issues, right? Exactly, and that's, that's the whole point. When we started, Seninoch, the company, we thought it was to primarily focus on preventing uh, antibiotic resistance because we know that 700,000 are dying each year of yeah. antimicrobial resistance. It's going to increase to 10 million during the next 30 years if we don't prevent infections from happening. Um, so we thought that was the focus, but then Corona came and sort of pushed the agenda of uh, infection prevention yeah. to the front row and that's what we can feel now that mm -hmm. everybody now knows how important it is now we just also need to react upon it and do something about it yeah yeah thanks for your answer i guess now we are in a very vibrant space here so how yeah. how, how, how did you feel like attending such a conference you know being a, being with so many people with different backgrounds as well right yeah it's it's very exciting motivating engaging there, there's so much interest, uh, interesting studies um, and you can sort of feel the passion from the researchers and these dedicated people. So I, I love being here and uh, as you can see, yeah, it's a, it's a great atmosphere. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, thank you for your answer. Uh, I want to wish you best of luck with uh, everything you do, your research, your company and everything. And just thank you for your time. Thank you so much.